All right, everybody. Uh, today we're talking about the question, why does impulse equal change in momentum, right? By now, probably your uh, physics teacher has told you that impulse and change in momentum are equal to each other, even though they're not the same thing. All right, we're going to talk about why that is. All right, so let's first talk about what these two things are. So a change in momentum is just, as it says, how much momentum has changed. Uh, usually, momentum momentum is mass times velocity. So for momentum to change, either the mass changes or the velocity changes. The most common situation is for the velocity to change. So if the mass stays the same and velocity changes, then we have this equation. Uh, delta P equals M delta V, meaning the change in momentum is just the mass times the change in uh, velocity. Okay, you multiply those two numbers together, you'll get how much momentum changes. Impulse. Um, impulse is a measure of force, but not just force. It's force multiplied by the time. Because obviously, um, if you're going to change the momentum of something, it matters not just how hard you push on it, but how hard you push on it and how long it takes for you to push on it. Because pushing on something for a longer time is going to have a bigger effect on its motion. So... Uh, impulse is a way of measuring that quantity. It is equal to force times the change of time. Change of time would just be how long the, the force is happening. Right, so to, to answer the question why these two are equal, we're going to go back to Newton's second law, one of the most fundamental laws in physics. And Newton's second law says the force is equal to mass times acceleration. Okay, so we'll start with that equation that we probably used a long time ago. And uh, I'm just going to replace acceleration, right? The A in the equation is equal to how much velocity changes divided by how much time changes. Okay, that's what acceleration is, right? So I'm going to rewrite the equation here with that delta V and delta T. But it means the same thing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by delta T. Okay, remember, in, if there's an equal sign, you can do... The same thing to both sides of the equal sign, and you still have an equation that's equal to each other, right? So if I multiply both sides by delta t, then this left side is still equal to this right side. But you might notice that I can cancel out these delta t's on the right, okay? Which leaves me with this right here. All right now, if you're paying close attention to the first couple few slides, you um, might notice these. This right here is impulse on the left side, force times change in time. Okay, we, we learned that earlier. There's the other slide that we saw earlier. And then the right side is change of momentum. Okay, change of momentum is the equation that I introduced earlier that is equal to mass times change of velocity. So what does this mean? It means that impulse must equal the change of momentum. Okay, so uh, there's a reason why we say it is, and it comes from Newton's second law, that these two will always be equal to one another. Impulse is... Basically, the force and the time is, is what something does. The change of momentum is the result in the other object that it's done to. All right, but those two numbers are going to be equal. All right, hopefully this answers the question, why does impulse equal change momentum? I'll see you all in the next video.